The first speaker is going to be Sunlight's own Kathy Kiley, who's the managing editor of our reporting group. Come on, Kathy. Yay, Kathy! <laughs> Tell them that they've won. Okay. All right, am I audible? I'm a printer, so I'm not used to all this high tech gizmo stuff. Um, I am the managing editor of Sunlight's reporting group. And uh, before I hooked up with the cool kids at Sunlight, I spent the better part of three decades in what many in this room might not so lovingly describe as the mainstream media. No hissing, please. Uh, for most of that period, I would have considered the speech I'm about to give you completely nuts. Back when I started my career, was right after Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein had taken down Richard Nixon and made journalism temporarily cool, I thought the only place to learn reporting was in a newsroom. And the only reason to learn it was if you worked in one. That's how I did it. First on a college campus, surrounded by Woodstein wannabes, and then in my first big city room, where my teachers included a cop shop reporter who kept a pistol in his desk drawer, a rewrite man who kept a baseball bat under the desk, and a political writer who one year, after an extended meditation at a local saloon, decided to solve his Christmas shopping problems by buying his wife and his daughter the same shower curtain. Those were the days. So some of you might be wondering what a nice, high-tech, open government organization like Sunlight is doing harboring a hoary relic of that late lamented era. I mean, in a world where everyone's a publisher on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and now Pinterest, haven't we made journalism obsolete? For the sake of democracy, we'd better hope not. Far from being obsolete, journalism must now become ubiquitous, the Allen wrench in every citizen's toolkit. There are three reasons I've come to this conclusion. First, we all now live in a sea of information, not all of it good information. In an information age, we must become more discriminating consumers. To do that, we have to think like reporters do. What's the source of my information? How reliable is it? What's the motive for giving me the information? As one of our presidents liked to say, trust but verify. Or, as a veteran of any American newsroom will tell you, if your mother says she loves you, check it out. Don't get played. The second reason more citizens have to start thinking like reporters is that there aren't as many reporters as there used to be. Because of the economic disruptions caused by the technology revolution, the newsrooms we've traditionally relied upon for our daily information diet are trying to do a lot more with a lot less. And that threatens the quality of our news report. Exhibit A, the Philadelphia Inquirer, winner of this year's Pulitzer Prize for Public Service, just got sold for the fourth time at a fire sale price. Exhibit B, Copley News Service's Washington Bureau, which a couple of years ago also won a Pulitzer for uncovering the graft that sent Duke Cunningham from Congress to jail, that bureau no longer exists. The third reason more citizens have to start thinking like journalists is to keep information democratic. Because of the collapse of the advertising model that sustained mass media, there's a very real threat that our brave new information society could develop a caste system with the highest quality, 
most thoroughly reported information available only to the elite. And the rest of us being left outside of the paywall with gossip, sensationalism, and propaganda. Or with data that's understandable only if some high-priced commercial entity reconstitutes it for you. For all of these reasons, I'm proud to represent the Sunlight Foundation's reporting group. We are a mini newsroom tucked inside a powerful data machine. We are there to report and also to teach and evangelize the tools we use to do our work. Tools like Follow the Unlimited Money, our real-time tracker of campaign contributions, or Influence Explorer, which compiles corporations' histories of campaign giving and lobbying, federal contracts, environmental violations, and influence on federal advisory boards, all in one swell food. Or our brand new Scout, which allows you to search the congressional record, the federal register, and the legislative records of all 50 states. Tools like these help journalists and citizens become better watchdogs. So does our training, like the McCormick Specialized Reporting Institute that my colleague Bill Allison ran last weekend to help more than 30 reporters figure out how to track the millions of dollars pouring into this year's presidential and congressional campaigns. We form partnerships with journalists and other like-minded organizations as well. Right now, we're working with a coalition of open government groups to put online the political advertising files that TV broadcasters won't. What the Federal Communications did yesterday was just a baby step in the right direction, and there will be a lot, lot more work to do if we're going to seize what may be our best opportunity to identify some of the sources of the dark money pouring into these campaigns. The hardest part of this effort is not going to be the technology. We have a lot of smart technologists at the Sunlight Foundation to take care of that. The hardest part of this effort is going to be the old-fashioned shoe leather part recruiting the number of boots we're going to need on the ground to do the actual information gathering. So, if you live in or near any of the famed battleground states, we need to talk. So all the world is a newsroom now, and if we are all publishers, we all need also to learn to be reporters. It's not rocket science but it's vital to democracy, and we at Sunlight are here to help. So let's have a great unconference. I look forward to getting to know some of you better and maybe recruiting you for the great craft that has been mine. Thanks. Thanks so much, Kathy.